This is Duke University. Ladies and gentlemen, could I ask you to all please rise as we present the Fuqua School of Business Class of 2015.
Wow. It's my extraordinary privilege to be Dean of the Fuqua School of Business. And every day at the Fuqua School is a great day, but today is an amazing day. And with all due respect to some fantastic Duke basketball teams over the years, I don't think I've ever seen so much talent on the Cameron floor. You have given us a gift over these past two years in terms of everything that you've put into your experience. And it's been an experience at times exhilarating, at times challenging. There have been tears. There have been laughter. You've had every kind of emotion that you could possibly experience. But throughout the entire time, you always gave your A game. You put the most into the program you possibly could. And for that, we are deeply grateful. I hope that you can appreciate the significance of what you've accomplished here. It's an amazing accomplishment, and we're so glad to now give you a gift in terms of this day for you. And so congratulations on a, just an astonishing accomplishment in terms of all that you've done. I would also like to point out that we have some PhD students here. Though small in number, if you add up all the years they've spent here, they come a lot closer to uh, what our daytime students have done. And so, but it's, uh, it's fantastic to have all of you here and to celebrate what you've done. And we cannot take away the fact that this class is unique. There is no other class that has both experienced a national championship in basketball and a number one ranking for the business school. So congratulations. I hope, this, this sounds terrible to say, but I hope that you have at least mixed emotions. I'm sure that, there, that part of you could not be happier about this special day. But I hope also that there's a little bit of sadness around what you're leaving behind. I know that we're unbelievably sad to have you move on. And so it should be a time of mixed emotion if we've had a great experience these past two years. On the other hand, there are a bunch of people here, your family, your friends, who are here to support you and be a part of this special day, where I don't think there's any mixed emotion whatsoever. It's like pure joy. It's great. You're done. So thank you all for joining us in this special day of celebration. I'd also like to point out that we have fantastic faculty and staff that brought you here, have nurtured you, 
and hopefully have co-created a great experience that you will never forget. And so many, many thanks to our faculty and staff. At this point, I'd like to turn the podium over to Kate Luce and Paul Rademacher. So Kate and Paul. Just gotta do this quick. All right, now let's get started. Graduates, faculty, families, friends, and Shane Battier. <laughs> Good afternoon and congratulations to the Fuqua class of 2015. Welcome to Team Fuqua and thank you all for being here. Team Fuqua, class of 2015, it is because of you, us, that people from the world over have assembled here today. They are here because you camped out in a team room to finish that strategy pa paper with your Sealy team while eating Enzo's pizza, because you survived first and second year recruiting, because you spent so much time in the Fox Center that coffee Chris knew your order, because you found your nap spot in the library, and ultimately, because you are a member of Team Fuqua. Looking back at all that we have packed into the past two years, the peaks and the valleys, the failures and the triumphs, the friendships and the memories, along with the emotions of leaving this place and these people that have truly become our family, it might be easy to let this moment pass without feeling its full significance. Feel the weight of this moment. These people in this room have assembled for you. Our, our class's journey did not begin when we walked into the Fox Center on August 1st, 2013 for first year orientation. Rather, we spent months or even years preparing, testing, applying, and interviewing to earn the opportunity to be here. We said goodbye to comfortable jobs, familiar cities, and established relationships, and we moved to, to Durham to join Team Fuqua. I think I speak for all of us when I say that the sacrifices have been absolutely worth it. We've been incredibly lucky, lucky to fit a lifetime's worth of opportunities and experiences into the two years we've spent at Fuqua. We've learned from the top business faculty in the country, formed lifelong friendships, traveled the world, and created unforgettable memories. It's been an honor to the two of us to have shared these experiences with so many of you. For those who don't know, at the Fuqua School of Business, we refer to our community as Team Fuqua because we consider ourselves to be one giant supportive team consisting of students, faculty, administrators, partners, children, and alumni. All prospective students hear about Team Fuqua. They might read about it on the website or catch a glimpse of it on a campus visit. However, the concept is hard to grasp until you've lived it or seen someone you love become a part of it. Now, after two years here, we all know it, and we're all a part of Team Fuqua. It is because of this Team Fuqua culture and the people who believe in it that we have learned just as much outside of the classroom during our time here that we have in it. Fuqua prides itself, most of the time, on being a student-led community. What does that mean? By student-led, we mean that students work in close partnerships with administrators to execute initiatives that range from Operation Blue Devil, which provides students the opportunity to spend a weekend at going through Special Forces training at Fort Bragg, um, to the crucial role that cl clubs play in the recruiting process, and to programs like the Fuqua Legacy Incubator, which provides a centralized source to capture institutional knowledge at Fuqua. Thanks to the part our peers play in our successes, and the part that we play in the successes of our peers, unlikely relationships are fostered, we feel invested in those around us, and we celebrate the successes of others as our own. We call that idea, the idea of your success is my success, supportive ambition, and it's one of the six guiding values that create the foundation of Team Fuqua. As a second year, I decided to recruit for consulting, and about two and a half weeks before my first round interviews, um, I got quite sick and got knocked out in, in bed, and I was unable to get up, much less prepare for my interviews. 
and this is where Team Fuqua really rallied around me. Nicole Miller from Student Life offered to bring me groceries and spoke to my professors for me. She checked in on me every day to see how I was feeling. Paul told me not to worry a bit about the MBAA. He was, he's got it all. Ignore my emails. The dean sent me a fruit basket and nice notes. Mary Beck, the consulting director, talked to me on the phone and met me at school on a Sunday to help me prepare for my interviews. And most importantly, my classmates and the alumni, the heart of Team Fuqua, stepped up and provided all the last minute help and preparation that I could take, giving me cases by phone, Skype, and in one case, dropping an appointment an hour out to meet me on campus and give me my final case. I'm thrilled to have the job opportunity that I do, and I know that it wouldn't be there if it wasn't for Team Fuqua. Kate and I have spent the past year thinking about this speech and the past week and this morning actually writing it. <laughs> and during that time, the discussion always comes back to what we have learned during our time at Fuqua and how we can apply these lessons after graduation. We'd like to share with you just a few key takeaways from our experience here. First, we have learned that to live a fulfilling life, we must follow our true passions and not those that outside influences may wish for us to follow. One classmate who has modeled this so well is Ben Seltzer. Ben's first passion in life was music, and over, over time he discovered a passion for value investing. To advance his knowledge of investing, he took night courses at another prestigious university, passed several parts of the, of the notoriously difficult CFA exam, and read extensively about investing theories and strategies. Eventually, Ben decided to pursue his MBA at Fuqua, to transition into a career that aligns with his passion, leaving behind a comfortable career in music for an uncertain future in investing. In his time at Fuqua, Ben has stayed true to his dream and not deviated from his chosen path, despite the distracting opportunities that abound at Fuqua. He has successfully competed in case competitions, TA'd our most difficult investing courses, led clubs, and continued to foster his passion. Ben is a great example that it's possible to follow our dreams and find success if we choose to make it happen for ourselves. Second, we have learned the importance of getting out of our comfort zones and putting aside the fear of failure. Catherine Levine did just that when she studied abroad by herself in China this spring. Catherine has had a very successful life thus far, building an impressive resume. However, she never felt like she took risks or pushed herself beyond her comfort zone prior to coming to Fuqua. When she decided to go to China, Catherine had never traveled alone before, much less lived abroad by herself. She did not speak Chinese and was generally afraid to study abroad. When she arrived in China, Catherine's luggage was lost, her apartment was dark and depressing, and she knew no one. But she decided to stick it out and embrace the experience. In doing so, she learned that she was braver than she ever imagined. She learned to trust herself and mostly, she learned to rely on her classmates for support. Catherine said of the experience, I would have never thought myself capable of doing it, but seeing all of my classmates from diverse and international backgrounds study abroad here and everywhere else in the world inspired me. As I start my next chapter, outside of the kind walls of Fuqua, I hope that I'm brave enough to keep pushing myself outside of my personal comfort zone and that I continue to surround myself with people who help me do so. Finally, we have learned to always set our aspirations high, but to also create and aspire to our own definitions of success and purpose in life. One of the most powerful articles I've read at Fuqua is Clay Christensen's How Will You Measure Your Life, which Professor Joe LaBeouf sent us in our first few weeks at Fuqua. In this article, Christensen states that people who are driven to excel have this unconscious propensity to underinvest in their families and overinvest in their careers even though intimate and loving relationships with their families are the most powerful and enduring source of happiness. So while I hope to have a fulfilling and rewarding career throughout my life, I know that I have other goals that matter greatly to me. To lead meaningful and happy lives, we must keep the full picture of what matters to us in mind. So why does this time matter? We've grown, we've stretched. We better know ourselves and what it means to be part of a strong, supportive culture made up of a wide variety of individuals who will continue to add color and humor to our lives. Today is the culmination of a multi-year journey, and hopefully not the actual culmination, 
but simply the launch of a new stage of this journey. Be present. Today is for the living. Classmates, because of you, we learn to speak up, to reach out, to challenge the status quo, but most of all, to be ourselves. The best part about being a Fuqua student has been being a member of Team Fuqua, and I can comfortably walk out of here today still feeling the security and the support of the community that I felt these past two years because Team Fuqua does not end today. Duke's head football coach, Coach C, has said, today is the oldest I've ever been. We're wiser, we're more mature, we're more capable to take on life than we've been any day before. Along with that thought, Coach Cutcliffe also says, today is the youngest I've ever been. Today is the day to have fun, take risks, and learn as much as possible, because we'll never be this young and full of promise again. Thank you all for your friendships, your support, all of the fun and all of the memories. We are forever changed by this place. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. In the spirit of giving and continuous improvement, I'd like to welcome to the stage those individuals whose work this year will help Fuqua continue to grow. Please welcome the class gift presenters, Laura Mixter and Brendan Hegg. Thanks, Paul and Kate. On behalf of the class of 2015, we would like to present this check to Dean Bolding to show our support for the Fuqua Annual Fund. This gift to the Fuqua School of Business will help sustain activities such as faculty research, scholarships, and global initiatives. This was a great year. We raised over $25,000 and 96% of our class were donated. Class of 2015, thank you for your participation and support. This is fantastic. Everyone should get a chance to hold a really big check like this sometime. <laughs> so I, I can't tell you how impressed I am by this class, not only in terms of what you've invested in your experience and your time here, but also your willingness to invest in those who will follow you. Thank you so much. Today, I have the distinct honor to introduce our student speaker, Baring Sang. Baring is a double dukey and is widely known in the Fuqua community for his passion for all things Duke. Prior to attending Fuqua, Baring served in the U.S. Marine Corps and, in his time at Fuqua, has committed himself to supporting the veteran community by serving as the co-president of the Duke Armed Forces Association. Baring has represented our class throughout our time at Fuqua as one of the two Class of 2015 Judicial Representatives, where he's been tasked with upholding and defending the Honor Code. Baring has also mentored numerous first-year students, both formally through the Cole Fellowship and informally, because that is just his nature. In addition to being a terrific student, Baring's a Fuqua scholar, and committed leader in our community, Baring is also a terrific and loyal friend. Following graduation, Baring will be moving to New York to work at Goldman Sachs. Ladies and gentlemen, men, Baring Singh. <clears throat> Kate, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm honored and deeply humbled to have the opportunity to speak today to the Fuqua School of Business class of 2015. And I want to extend a heartfelt thanks to the family and friends in the audience who come from around the world to be with us here today. And I promise going forward that we'll try to be better about keeping in touch with you. Uh, thanks to my family for being here and the best boss I ever knew, Mom, uh, Kathy. And uh, thanks for coming to a second graduation at Duke, Mom. Um, like Kate mentioned and, and Paul, this is uh, 10 years ago this weekend is, is an, the anniversary of when I first graduated from Duke, so it's especially uh, 
especially meaningful to be able to speak to you. Uh, classmates, it's been a long week of celebrating graduation. Um, and I, mo I know that most of us have already done what Bill Mayhew uh, advised us to do, which is to empty the tank, because I was at Myrtle with you. And, uh, and I don't know, I, I can't speak for any of you on this one, but I know that I'm pretty close to empty on the tank. So that opportunity at Myrtle is also a great chance to sort of solicit ideas about what to write in this speech. And so I'm gonna share some of those now, and some were unsolicited. Uh, I should have known that the quality of the advice I got was gonna be much like our grading curve here at Fuqua, uh, curved, in fact. So, so here's the first one, uh, Bering, why don't you just read Bob Marley's songs? Uh, no one actually knows the words in them anyway, and it's gonna make you sound deep and profound. I thought, great, I wanna be deep, and I wanna be profound. And the credit to that actually goes to Dan Wenzel. Second thing, someone told me to read slam poetry. Just read slam poetry. I thought, that sounds good too. I don't know what slam poetry is. It's about 11 p.m. Uh, at a late night dinner at Professor David Robinson's house that that idea came through. But my personal favorite, actually, is um, if you want to be consistent, Marrying, just wait until the night before to write it. After all, we didn't get through our MBAs any other way. And that credit goes to everyone else. <laughs> I did none of that. Um, I locked myself in the computer lab near the library, and then I pained several of you, uh, Carson, Christine, and Mike Manella, to uh, listen to the earlier drafts of the speech, which ran 25 and a half minutes and 21 and a half minutes, respectively. But I'm going to save you from that. You can thank them later for it. Um, what I am going to talk about is, uh, is a value-driven life today, and I'm going to talk about that by sharing how that contributes to the creation of the business school that we want and why it's important for us to sustain and propagate this unique culture that we build at Fuqua. Because I'm gonna talk about what makes this place different. So I was an active duty uh, Marine Corps officer before I returned to business school, and I applied to one school. I applied to Fuqua. I'm not the only one in the audience, uh, my classmates, that did that. And here's my reason, though. In the Marine Corps, I became accustomed to living a set of behaviors that were driven by values. In the Marine Corps, those were honor, courage, and commitment. Because you see, it wasn't enough to be the best marksman or the fastest runner. Competency and skill were just the beginning. What mattered was striving to live the values of the Marine Corps, and to create a culture that aspired to excellence. And as it turns out, we have values at Fuqua too. And Kay and Paul refer to those as apparent principles. Some of those are support of ambition, uncompromising integrity, and authentic engagement. Yes, we focus on business education, but our differentiating characteristic at Fuqua is not the superior job opportunities we have, and it's not the academic excellence we achieve in the classroom. I'm sorry, Ryan. Econ is econ no matter where you go. The investment here is in leadership and character development. We want to be high performers, yes, we also want to be able to work in and run teams that trust us. We want success to be an extension of striving for team excellence. I would argue that it's that focus on not just career success or academic achievement, but character development that makes us the number one business school in the country. Classmates, we know this. And to our families and those in the audience, if you haven't already, you're going to get a sense of that over the course of this weekend. So what does it mean to be part of Team Fuqua? Well, it's a community, it's a family. It's a culture that demands us to be better versions of ourselves by holding each other accountable and others accountable. We strive to leave a legacy of culture consistent with what we want to associate ourselves, ourselves with as we go forward. So I sat in the computer lab, again, this computer lab, um, to figure out what to write to support this argument, and, and Professor Shane DeColey asked me, why don't you think about who inspires you and what moves you. And so I sat there with this list as I thought about who inspired me. The list gets longer and longer and longer, and I realized I'm gonna take Cheryl and uh, Liz's job of reading out the names of my classmates at graduation. And so I focused instead on what moved me. We talk a lot about teams. I just mentioned the word team. But I would say that it's the individual actions of each of you who do what you think is right every day without fail, without thanks, and without hope of recognition, but with full hearts of kindness that keep us ticking. 
we are a student-led community. And the best feature of that is that we're positioned and our culture indeed demands that we take responsibility and initiative to create conditions for the outcomes and the expectations we expect. So here are some examples. Sidner Gammon, Snyder Griman, hi Snyder. Uh, she's my friend. She also happens to be a uh, Distinguished Speakers Fellow, the Lead Admissions Fellow, along with her co-lead, a standout member of our Cole Fellowship, uh, and, a, and a Class Gift Development Fellow. So I think it's unquestionable uh, about her selfless service to the school, but what's unsurprising, I think, to our community is that's not her title contributions to Fuqua that make her special. It's when she seeks out opportunities to catch the balls floating in the air. It's when she says yes every time. And that's what makes her great. And that's the secret about what makes this place great. Like all great organizations, the majority of the hard work is done behind the scenes. And this place is special because of you, and you, and everyone else in the audience here, and what you've done as individuals to make our team. It's when you give a ride home to a classmate in the rain when you can't get an Uber. It's our friends who pick up slides for us because we miss class. It's Poppy and his wife Marisol. Poppy's not his real name. Um, Kata Mancebo, Pablo Mejia, and Sharon Curran, and the other 15 to 17 of you who showed up not for one economic grading session with, uh, with me, but every one of them. And then some of you followed me into marketing, and Sharon, I'm thinking of you when I say that. It's Tom Moran who gives me his tie during recruiting because I forgot mine, and as many of you might know, I'm very forgetful. Um, it's Hamak Kapoor explaining the nuances to a financial technical interview question with the patience of a father teaching a kid how to tie his shoe. I'm not the most naturally gifted person when it comes to numbers, and Hamant knows that. In fact, several of you know that. It's Arthur Nye teaching valuation to our co-president of the NBA, Kate Luce, for an entire evening before the final. And it's like people like Adrian Lawley, the first non-veteran student, I think, who uh, came to recruit veteran prospective students to build our community here. I'm gonna go on. It's Brendan and Laura and Ryan Landman who run a shoestring budget club that arguably touches the most students at our school. It's Stephanie and Emily and Caroline running a multi-event, year-long fundraising campaign for the North Carolina Special Olympics. It's Laura Mixter who runs a multi-event, year-long fundraising campaign to raise money for our students and our classmates that want to do social impact type internships in the summer. John Zamberg, I remember when you were recruiting full-time after most of us had already secured our jobs to support the, our, our club, Mark Boyle and I's club, the Duke Armed Forces Association. I'll never forget the time you committed to that. And it's people like Cameron Platt and Matt Pittsworth who remind us of things like the North Carolina same-sex marriage equality ruling last year. And it's the other thousand acts of kindness by the unnamed and unsung people that have pervaded our walls and that make us who we are. I'm one person who saw these things happen. And what didn't I see? What did I miss today? I don't know. But I would ask you to think about that in case you're tired of listening to me. You multiply that by 10, and then you realize that's how we create Team Fuqua. You realize how powerful it is to intertwine values and character development with business education and understand why it's critical for us to go out into the world and share how a supportive culture can be extraordinarily powerful. When I wake up in the morning, I think about the expectations I've set for myself in the eyes of you all. I think about the people who've placed faith and trust in me to be a good person, like the best leader and boss I knew. Thanks, Kathy, for being here. Um, because you know what? You wrote me a recommendation to be here. And then admissions took a chance on me. And what I think about is people like you, and mom, and Elise, and hoping that I'm worthy of the time and investment that you made in me. I think about if I will make good on my gratitude and your influence. And to my classmates, I hope that for the rest of what I do in my life, make me worthy of your kindness over the last two years, and that I don't let any of you down. I hope we all strive to make good on the trust and confidence our friends and this institution has in us. I try to avoid basketball, because Shane's here today, and whatever I was going to say would pale in comparison to what he can speak to. But I have one thing that meant a lot to me, and so I'm going to share it. After winning the national championship, 
Quinn Cook said to, to an interviewer, I'm just blessed that coach thought I was good enough to come to Duke. And I felt that way every day I've been here. Just blessed that admissions took a chance on me. And I won't let you down. I can't repay any of you for the kindness or the impact of your selflessness on my life. Because in life there are debts you can repay, and there are those that you can't. But I do know that I'm deeply appreciative and humbled by your kindness. And to our supporters, the family and the audience and the friends, I want the faculty and administration too to know that we're grateful that you care. And to the class of 2015, there's only one thing left for us to do, which is go out and crush it. It's on us to take what we've learned about values and character and competence to tackle the world's hardest challenges and maybe, just maybe, make it a better place through business. So one last time, congratulations and forever Duke. Thank you so much, Paul, Kate, and Baring, for your, your wonderful words. Fantastic. It's now uh, my pleasure to acknowledge a few people before we turn, uh, turn things over to Shane Battier. So first, I'd like to acknowledge the teaching awards that were given out at the, uh, at the ceremony earlier this week. Uh, first of all, Bill Mayhew was named the uh, Core Teacher Award for Innovation and Teaching. And so, thank you to Bill for a fantastic job. <laughs> Second is John Graham, who won the award for innovation and teaching in an elective. And John, I believe you're here, if you could just wave to everybody. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge Mary Beck White Sutton, who won the Students' Choice Staff Award. So thank you, Mary Beck. It's now my great pleasure to, to introduce our graduation speaker, Shane Battier. Yes. And he hasn't even talked yet. <laughs> So we have very, very high standards when it comes to choosing our, our graduation speakers. And we, we're looking for someone who has had significant accomplishment in their life, that they, have, uh, that they have accrued wisdom and insight through their experiences, that they have something to share with all of you that will hopefully be inspirational as you take the turn to the next phase of your life journey. And more than anything, we hope that it's someone who is a great role model, where you say, yes, that's a leader of consequence. That's who I would like to emulate in my career. And Shane Battier checks all those boxes with room to spare, mixing my metaphors here. But Shane, more than anything, is one of us. He shares the values of Team Fuqua and therefore I think is an incredibly excellent role model to see just how far you can go when you have the kinds of values that Baring and Kate and Paul talked about. And so if you talk about some of those values and you think about Shane, collective diversity, Shane firmly believes that when he's on a team, it's stronger because they're together but it's also a stronger and better team if the people on the team are different and bring different skills to the table, different experiences, and different ways to make that team better. He really lives the idea of supportive ambition. I can think of no one who has built a basketball career more successfully on the premise of 
your success is my success. What he has done is phenomenal to make his teams better. And one point of evidence is hanging behind us, the, the 2001 championship banner. Of course, all of you will have your championship banner hung uh, when you come back, you'll see it. But he's had unbelievable team success at Duke in the NBA, winning multiple national, uh, NBA championships. And he's had great individual success through supporting others. It hasn't diminished his star, what he gives in any way. But it has led to some interesting breakthroughs in terms of how we evaluate what makes a great player in terms of basketball. In college, he was acknowledged as the player of the year. But in the NBA, something funny happened, which was wherever he went, his teams were great. His teams would win. And yet, he didn't have the statistics in the NBA that would say, well, that's an all-star there. And so his label was the no stats all-star. And in fact, I give Shane credit for the whole beginning of data analytics in basketball, because people were trying to explain the mystery of what is he doing that makes his team better? How is he supporting his team in a way that they're great? And so it turns out that there are all kinds of analytics now that we use in basketball. And if you use some of those analytics, like a player plus minus ratio, that Shane's stats are actually Hall of Fame worthy. And so supportive ambition, he personifies that idea. Authentic engagement, something about Shane is you get to know him wherever he goes, he represents himself authentically. He brings who he is to whatever team that he's on in order to make that team better. He cares about impactful stewardship. So he understands he has an obligation, not just to the team that he's on, but the team that he's a member of in his wider community. And so Shane and his wife have established the Take Charge Foundation. Nothing to do with all the charges that he took in his, uh, his basketball career, but instead giving students an opportunity for education. And so he's given back in every community in which he's resided in ways that make you unbelievably proud. And the last thing I'll mention, because I really want to hear from him and you don't want to hear from me, is the idea of a loyal community, which is, luckily for us, he firmly believes in loyal community. Because not only is he a part of the Duke community, he's a part of the Fuqua community. He's here today, but he's also a senior fellow at Cole. And so without further ado, Shane Battier. Good afternoon. Can everyone do me a favor and turn around and make sure my jersey is still hanging up there? Is it? Well, the reason why I ask, you uh, never takes past success for granted. We had the, the weekend executive graduation this morning. I had an older gentleman stop me and say, man, I loved you. You're one of my favorites. How's Alaska? I said, I'm sir, I'm sorry. I think you got me confused with another good looking light skinned brother, Trajan Langdon, who's from Alaska. And he goes, man, I know you're not Langdon. Boozer, how you doing, man? So my name is Battier. He's like, man, whatever. <laughs> Champions, graduates, parents, esteemed faculty, deans, thank you for having me. It is a great honor and a great privilege to share what I call my home, my sanctuary, with all of you today. I was a religion major here many moons ago, graduated class 2001, uh, but in all reality, this has always been my church, my sanctuary, a, a place that's unbelievably special. And I get goosebumps every time I walk in the doors and I look up and I'm reminded of all the good, the bad, and the ugly, but mostly good. And I'm reminded of the first time I ever saw Cameron Indoor Stadium. I was in high school. I'd never been to the campus of Duke University, so naturally, Coach K was recruiting me. The first place I wanted to go was, was Cameron, see what it was all about. So I was like a little kid 
got out of the car, it was 10 o'clock at night. I run up to Cameron, I'm looking for an open door. All the doors are locked. I run around the, the arena, finally found a door that's open. I sneak in, break into Cameron the first time I'm here. And I come in here and all the lights were turned off, except for the spotlights that were shown upon the retired jerseys that used to hang on one end of the arena. Guys like Dick Grote, Jeff Mullins, Johnny Dawkins. Well, one thing I noticed, I know that I'm a numbers guy, I'm a metrics guy, analytics guy. I noticed that there was a pattern. 32, Christian Leitner was retired. 33, Grant Hill, my idol, was retired. 35, Danny Ferry, retired. And I said, hmm, it's my duty. It's my duty to try to close out the 30s. <laughs> and so that's how I chose to be number 31. And after the end of a pretty awesome run, I'm happy to have my numbers doing my part to help close out the 30s. But that reminds me so much of everyone here today. You're, remember your first time stepping on the Duke campus? In the back of your mind, you had a vision for yourself that your jersey would be hanging in the proverbial Fuqua halls of business. Can we do that, Dean Bolding? Can we start retiring jerseys? Okay, let's do it. Well, I'm reminded of the great Mr. Fuqua, and I never had the pleasure of, of meeting Mr. Fuqua, uh, but I know those who knew him well. And although he wasn't uh, especially fond of sports, he always approached business like sports. And he once said, when I buy a company, I can tour a factory and will probably be impressed. But when I exit the back door, I won't know much more than I did when I came in the front door. But show me its balance sheet and I'll tell you about that company. He loved metrics and analytics and he did much of the research for himself, a man after my own heart. He came from nowhere, he worked hard, he studied, he analyzed, he won battles, both big and small, learned from the losses and the mistakes, and in the end, was an absolute champion. And that's what all of you are today. You are champions, congratulations. Well, there's a few things that you have to know as a Duke grad, and I like to say, I like to call it things that dumb people say to you when they find out you're a Duke grad, all right? So here's my top things that I hear when I tell people I'm a Duke grad. Man, I hate Duke, but I like you. <laughs> people will feel strangely compelled to confess to you the last time that they watched a basketball game. Like you are some basketball Yoda. So congratulations, even though you didn't come to one game in Cameron, you are now, you have a master's in basketball. <laughs> there are a few tough days as a Duke graduate as it pertains to basketball. If you do not follow basketball, that's too bad because you will be the first person to know when the Blue Devils go down, judging by the amount of text messages and phone calls that you get. And it's especially tough during March Madness, when everyone feels that they're right and their duty to tell you that the Blue Devils lost. And my response is always the same. Feel free to use this going forward. I tell people, I say, look, there's only two stories here as it pertains to Duke basketball. When Duke wins and when Duke loses, either way, it's the lead story on SportsCenter, which is more I can, than I can say for your school. Thank you very much. Well, whether you like it or not, you've inherited what it means to be a Duke Blue Devil. All the good, all the bad, all the ugly. It is part of your fabric. Too late now. We have your money, and you don't have your diplomas yet. <laughs> we got you. The beauty of being a Blue Devil at heart 
of having the Duke fabric as part of your soul is that it's not about the rankings. First of all, congratulations on the number one ranking, Business Week. Best business school in the world, yes? Let's hear it. That is a hell of an achievement. But like Coach K said, I'm still waiting for my trophy from being number one in the AP poll first time back in 1985. There's no trophy, but what there is, and the most important thing about being the best in the world, it's not about the ranking. It's not about the numbers. It's not about the accolades. It's about the standards. It's about the standards that you've developed over the last two years that define you as a Fuqua graduate. When I was here, we had a, tr a pretty tremendous run. In four years, we won 133 games and 15 losses. When I played, I was 131 and 15. Missed a couple games, struck throat, you know the deal. Which is more than anybody in the history of college basketball. But for us, it was never about the amount of wins that we had. Yes, we competed for championships, we competed for Final Fours, we competed to be the best, but for us, it was about carrying on the tradition and the standards that have been set before us by Dick Grote, Jeff Mullins, Gene Banks, Mike Jaminski, Johnny Dawkins, Christian Leitner, Grant Hill, Bobby Hurley, Trajan Langdon. It was our job to put in the preparation, dedication, the togetherness, the belief to carry on what it meant to be a Duke Blue Devil. That is your task as you leave here today. There's no question you will go on to achieve great things. But it's not about how much money you make or the title that's in front of your name. It's about carrying yourself with the respect and with the standards that make you worthy of posting your your diploma on the wall. And I learned this lesson at a tough time in Duke basketball. It was after 1999, we had just lost the national championship to the, the University of Connecticut. Our team going into that game was 37 and one. If you win that game, we're considered one of the greatest basketball teams in the history of college basketball. Unfortunately, we have a tough game, lose a, to a worthy adversary in Connecticut, and now we are a skid mark in the underwear of history. <laughs> it's a nice skid mark, but it's a skid mark. After that game, we had four people go into the NBA draft, including number one draft pick, Elton Brand, my roommate. William Avery, 13th pick. Corey Maggetti, 14th pick. Trajan Langdon, 17th pick. A funny thing happened. People said, it's over for Duke. It's over. All that's left on the bench in the Duke cupboard are a couple role players. Battier, you gotta be kidding me. This guy's gonna lead this team back to the Final Four? No way. We had a couple of talented freshmen, Mike Dunleavy, you know, who looked about 12 years old at the time. That's my best friend, I can say that. Carlos Boozer, Jason Williams, and a bunch of role players who hadn't proven themselves. It's over for Duke. They had their nice run. They're out. Well, I was working at a pub public relations firm in Chicago for my summer internship. And I got a call from one day that summer going into my junior year from Coach K. And Coach K said, hey Shane, how you doing? Doing great. Are you ready to be the ACC Player of the Year and lead us back to the Final Four? And I kind of laughed. <laughs> We're well, Coach. Click. My man hung up on me. OK. So he calls back about the same time next day. Says, hey, sorry, you must have had a bad connection. Uh, I gotta ask you a question, Shane. Are you ready to average 20 points and 10 rebounds and get us to a Final Four? And I said, well, Coach, that, well, that's funny you say that. Click! <laughs> Hung up on me again. Well, by the third day, I'd, I, I'd wised up. He called back and said, hey, Shane, sorry about the last two days. Are you ready to lead us to the Final Four? to continue what Duke basketball is all about, to be the next in the great line 
of those who continue the standard of what Duke is about. And I said, Coach, absolutely. I'm the guy. I'm the guy. And so it's ironic that the start of that year, we, we started the year uh, 13th in the country, team that everyone sort of counted out, which is ironically is, is the same uh, ranking, uh, a lesser known publication than Business Week rated our beloved Fuqua. Uh, but that's a different story for a different day. And through our belief and through our standards and our work, we rose to number one by the end of the year which was the precursor of our national championship run in 2001. So for us, it was about having the belief and the vision and trusting in our training, much like all of you will, the second Uli Fuqua. One of the most important messages that I learned from Duke basketball, from Duke University, is the importance of the next play. And this is a big mantra of, of Coach K. And essentially, what you have d just done, what you have just completed, is not as important as what you're about to accomplish, and what you're about to take on. For the most important play of the game, or the most important moment in your life, is not what just happened, it's what is about to happen. You should focus all of your resources, time, energy, and attention on what is about to go down. Well, obviously, as graduates, it's laid out for you. But this is a really apt metaphor in the game of basketball. You can't worry about a turnover you just committed. Nor can you spend excessive time celebrating a three-point shot that you hit that just may have tied the game in the final four. It really is a waste of time lamenting about past mistakes or excessively celebrating success. It's distracting, and it can leave you, your circle, or your team unprepared for the challenges that are next in front of you. And it robs you of your ability to do your best at that moment and give yourself the full attention it deserves. See, basketball is a lot like the game of life. The best players are the fastest thinkers and those who can move on to the next opportunity, the next play, the next quarter, the next chapter in your life, the next job, the next year, whether you've had a terrible year or a championship year. Those who can attack the next play, the next challenge, with the discipline, with the purity, with the ethic, with the ethics that made you success and made you Fuqua graduates, those are the ones who will succeed in the future. And as a side note, going back to the Coach K hang-up story, I was telling this story to Tim Cook at the Final Four in Indianapolis. And he said, you know what? Coach K did the same thing to me when I took over for jobs. <laughs> so you never know when you guys take over Exxon or whatever great company is next, expect a call from Coach K. He's used this bit before. <laughs> what Duke is about and what Baring and Kate and Paul talked about, it's about championship traits. You are all champions. You are all champions. In fact, most people will identify you with the 2015 championship men's basketball team. You tell them, hey, I'm a champion. We were, we were ranked number one when I graduated. I can't help them now. We were number one when I was there. The lessons of sacrifice, what you've given up over the last two years to better your future, to better your family's future. The ownership of what it means to be a Fuqua grad, to be a Duke grad, and all the things that go along with it, be a good, be a bad, be a bold. The possession of a growth mindset. The quintessential Dukey believes that talent is not innate, something to be displayed. Rather, talent is something to be learned 
and cultivated. There is a championship professionalism, staying, coming early, staying late, living in a no excuse zone, helping your teammate, making your teammate better. And most of all, the quintessential Fuqua grad, the quintessential Duke grad exhibits a hunger game mentality. Now I'm not advocating going out there with a bow and arrow and, and trying to find some, some, some canned spam out there. The metaphor of doing what it takes, doing what it takes to get the job done in an ethical way, in a smart way, in an efficient way is what you've learned over the last few years here at Fuqua. And so all these, all these traits, all these life skills, I believe are part of a puzzle. And I believe everybody in this room has a puzzle and everybody's puzzle looks a little different. Some pieces are bigger than, than others, but they're all essential to the completion of the puzzle. And the glue that holds that puzzle together is Duke are the standards of Duke and of Fuqua. And it's forever, and it's forever. One of my favorite quotes is by General Douglas MacArthur who said, there's no security on Earth, only opportunity. No security, only opportunity. And I believe that it's my puzzle, the puzzle that was forged here at Duke, the puzzle that was forged in 13 years of the NBA, the puzzle of growing up in Detroit, Michigan, prepares me for every play and every opportunity that's coming down the pipe next, the next play. And that's what Duke basketball taught me more than anything. So as I wrap, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you for having me here today. Be proud. Be proud of your accomplishment. Know that your family is proud of you, your faculty is proud of you if you're doing something that most couldn't do, to be honest. Never underestimate the effort that you put in to be here today, so enjoy it. But also focus on what's next, because we're all curious to see what you're going to do to continue to win that championship. I want to thank the Dean Bowling, the deans, the faculty. Thank you to Cameron Indoor Stadium. I also want to thank J.B. Fuqua for making this all possible. He's my kind of leader and businessman. He's probably somewhere watching us, probably teaching St. Peter analytics or metrics or something. Let's hope for the sake of our immortality that we measure up and win the ultimate championship. Congratulations. Thank you. Forever Duke. Thank you, Shane, for your wonderfully inspirational remarks. And on behalf of the entire community, I'd like to give you this gift. If I could now ask the daytime dean, Russ Morgan, to approach the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Shane's wondering why are they chanting for this guy? So, thank you. That's, uh, I'll take that as the equivalent of a retired jersey in this place. So. Well, congratulations, you guys. Um, I, I'm really excited to celebrate with you today, but as I've said before, two years is really not nearly enough time with all of you. And I think Dr. Seuss put it best when he said, uh, how did it get to be so late so soon? So I've tried to convey some part of my gratitude to you all um, last week on Thursday when we talked, but I want to quickly say thank you again. And I know there, there, there's way too much to thank you for, but thank you for the commitment you've had to each other. Thank you for being positive, for engaging in the partnership in a positive way, for pouring your time into helping out your classmates and all the energy and all the passion that you've brought to everything. So 
you've made this a great year, a great couple of years, and you've made a real difference at Fuqua. Um, I thought I'd give you something a little bit different today. So we asked you to give us 25 random facts when you came in and we learned a lot about you. And so I went back and I thought maybe I could come up with 25 random observations or events from the two years. And the list had maybe 7,000 things on it. And so um, I've culled it down to about 25. And one nice thing is I think they're consistent with what Paul and Kate and Baring were hitting you guys with. But for number one, I thought we'd start with, with orientation. And so you've had some great speakers throughout the two years. Um, these included Allison Levine, who provided the wisdom from her Everest trek, reminding us that sometimes you have to go backwards or down to go forwards. Gavin advised you guys to be diligent. I don't know if you remember this, talking about constructing your personal brands throughout your two years. And I thought, you know, you all were su remarkably successful at this, although I think there's some times for some of you and shooters and the bus might have been a little bit too strong of a, a pull. <laughs> Other speakers provided guidance, including leave behind more than you take away. And it's only a failure if you didn't learn something. You lived our frequent norms. I loved hearing from some of you when you came back from exchange and you said, that, that you really appreciated our norms even more so after living without them. And this is week number one. We've talked about it a few times, but it was a great day and it was great to celebrate with Coach K. Only to be followed a little bit later in the year by our own national championship with the basketball team, which again, maybe my favorite part of that was, was through social media, seeing you guys getting selfies with Tim Cook and things like that at the event. So you guys were mentors, so a personal joy to me was to watch you mentor our first year class and prepare them to take over both formally and informally at Fuqua. You planned and executed BDW and orientation, hopefully making sure that you brought in new students, amazing students, much like yourselves. You produced amazingly funny and mostly respectful Fuqua Vision skits. <laughs> and you showed other schools how great we are. You showed through connecting to North Carolina the Special Olympics and NBA games. You supported your classmates, you helped raise money for the summer internship fund, not without scaring us a bit with your beards and your mustaches, but it was all for a good cause. And you showed us your world and your cultures through Global Week and through Fuqua Discovers. Over the two years, you fed us well from around the world dinners to Iron Chef, where I got to taste some of the best food I've ever had made on a hot plate. We were able to run together, notably the Tar Heel 10 miler, where it was great to see Fuqua shirts in the right color of blue running through Chapel Hill. And you entertained us all at Fuqua Idol and Fuqua's Got Talent and helped us appreciate just how multidimensional you all are. We began to wrap up the year with Fuqua Reflects where your messages were to trust, to inspire, and to never give up. You also announced babies that were on the way and you noted your love of family and your love of your Sea Lead team, sometimes with the same words. You told us to laugh and be kind, something I hope you'll always remember, and you capped the year off with messages from Shane DeColey and Bill Mayhew. From Bill, life involves many cycles of providing and receiving help. You can simultaneously have one hand forward and one hand back and always empty the tank. And from Shane, we can and we, we do have full hearts but not dry eyes. And finally, number 25, you've helped make Fuqua a place where we're all proud to call home. And as you leave here, please know that your success really truly will be our success. All right, at this time, we'd like to acknowledge a number of today's graduates. First, for each graduating class, we recognize the top 10% of the class based on their academic achievement. These students are designated as Fuqua Scholars, and this year's recipients are noted in your program. With the 2015 Fuqua Scholars, please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Second, the students in the graduating class and the Fuqua deans nominate and select students for a number of awards based on their contributions to the Fuqua community. These awards and the recipients are also noticed in your program. I ask at this time, the second year award recipients, please stand and be congratulated for their achievements. Thank you. 
All right, now what you've been waiting for, it's time to individually recognize each of the graduates. So we'll ask each of our graduates to come forward and be recognized and congratulated by Dean Boulding, Shane Battier, and me. Gentlemen, would you please step forward to congratulate our graduates? At this time, I'd like to ask Jim Bettman, the Burlington Industries Professor of Marketing and the Director of the PhD Program, to come forward and read the names of our PhD students. Matthew Fox, Relma Salman, Christina Rader, Heisheng hey, Zhu, hey, Yiting Deng, Chang Wang Deng. Thank you, Jim. At this point, I'd like to ask Liz Riley Hargrove, our Associate Dean for Admissions, and Cheryl Dirks, our Associate Dean for Career Management, to come forward and read the names of our MBA graduates. Kate Cannon Luce, down. Paul Andrew Rademacher, Baring Sang, Laura Ellen Barnes Mixter, it's Haig. Brendan Haig. Maher Abogar. Akrathi Agarwal. Prakur Agarwal. Prakur Agarwal. Sorab. Sorab Agarwal. John Aikman. Casey Ackerblom. Ethan Alexander. Ethan Alexander. Daniela Alam. Daniela Maria Alam. Maria Ariano. Maria Christina Ariano. Georgiana Avram. Georgiana Paula Avram. <laughs> Angela Cox. Matthew Jacob Barnard. Kevin Lawford Brilliant. Kevin Tyler Belt. Eric Thomas Chappelle. Also graduating with a joint degree from the Nicholas School of Environment. Ariaga Torres. Omar David Ariaga Torres. Mm -hmm. Charlotte. Charlotte Susan Buchanan. May Chen. Mm -hmm. May Chen. Michelle, Michelle C. Kim. Diana Maria Gonzalez. Ayu Dewey. Ayu Dewey. Dana Elizabeth Cogdale. 
Do it like a gold watch. Mm -hmm. Rupa Balaj. Caitlin Marie Carr. Boy Adjun, like down there. Grant James Boyajan. Saad Majid Dar. Saad Majid Dar. Ibiyinka Agbi. Ibiyinka Agbi. All right. Johan Ose Bobcom. Do you want Barton or Bart? Bart. Bart Bradshaw. Brika. Marissa Christine Brika. Chandola. Ashish Chandola. <laughs> Taylor Bull. Shatila. Mm -hmm. Mark Shatila. Sabalos. Mm -hmm. Jose Antonio Sabalos Sandino. <laughs> Ramos. Ramos. Mm -hmm. Marisol Martinez Ramos. Just like it was. Mm -hmm. Paula Soledad Pantelano. Pantelano. Natalia Jolinski. Javier Valenzuela. Javier Valenzuela. I think we can get that one. Hunter Campbell Cardwell. Chawla. Preet Chawla. You want it back? K Chen. K Chen. Lee Chen. Lee Chen. Buse. Mm -hmm. Alexander George Buse. Bless your heart. Ross Daniel Gutler. Brian Gary Buckley. Mark Ronan Boyle. So men, Don. So men, Don. Piero Arigoni. Pedro Fernandez. Joaquin Brom, also graduating with a degree from the Public Policy School. <laughs> Just like it. Mm -hmm. Manuel Francisco Gala McKenna. Guarda. Mm -hmm. Ignacio Guardo. Guarda. Calleja. Mm -hmm. Diego Roberto Decentes Calleja. De Narvaez. Mm -hmm. Nicholas De Narvaez. Hervas Fernandez. Mm -hmm. Hervas Fernandez. Luis Fernandez. Luis Felipe Inuritegra. Okay. Luis Felipe Inuritegra. Javier Araya. Or now on the last name. The whole thing? You want the whole name? Juan Manuel and Dion are now. Samuel Cuellar. Samuel Garcia Cuellar. Hail. Yeah, hail, not hail. Ana Maria Haye. Yes. Mm -hmm. Marina Carabias. Habib. Mm -hmm. 
Marcello Habis. Caetano. Mm -hmm. Bettina Caetano. Raul Sely, Luis Elizondo, mm -hmm. Luis Elizondo, Bielsa Navaleta, Matthew James Christensen, Tal Huss. Mm -hmm. Tal Huss. Saurabh Khatri. Stavros Kutolagenis. Mm -hmm. Stavros Kutolagenis. Anirudh Chitlangya. Anirudh Chitlangya. Chiruku on the last one. Mm -hmm. Nikhil Reddy Chiruku. Prasant Halapa. It's Cody. Mm -hmm. Blaze Charles Cody. <laughs> Daniel Raymond Chow. Avent. Mm -hmm. Clayton Burns Neal Avent. Mellor, like Heller. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Mailer Conley. Sin. Deborah Sin. Cho. Sonia Cho. Rosa Nickham. Dennis Busnikin. Obina Jamike KK. Obina Jamike KK. you have your minute now. All right. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Herman Eugene Bulls Jr. with Connor. Stephen Chiman Chung. Stephen Chiman Chung. Krasnova. Maria Krasnova. Just Tanya. Tanya Bergelson. Brandon Craig Edmond, also graduating with a degree from the uh, Duke University School of Law. Benjamin Donahue. <laughs> Jessica Powell Dennis. Catherine Christina Dixon. Oh, Charles Chip Toomey Blue Jr. Zachary Ross Chryson. I like it. Casey James Donahue. Elizabeth Jean Dunn. Allison Elizabeth Caldwell. Rachel Emily Exxon. Caroline Lucina Hope. Josh Aaron Kahn. Patrick Dunnigan. Sanaz Falahapiche. Laura Eisenbeis. Eden David Ellis, also graduating with a degree from the Public Policy School. 
Brandon Michael Irvin. Sandy Komen. Okay, Escajadillo, just like uh -huh. Paul Escajadillo. Fucheri. Pablo Matias Fucheri. David Garcia. Eduardo Arturo Escalante. Catherine Gasner. Monica Madeline Fry. Lipstein. Lori Lipstein. Adrian Marie Lale. Ann Sidner Gammon. Katie Grissom. Hazel Guan. Gondam. Suman Gondam. Tamogna Ghosh. Tamogna Ghosh. Matthew Noble Gaylord. Golner. Thomas Golner. Gillette. Charles Prentice Gillette. Jason Christopher Johnson. Jung To Go. Leaf Gorman. Shannon Leaf Gorman. Alonso Javier Guzman. Jessica Ann Goldman. Travis Michael Ferber. Benjamin Allen Horwitz. Andrew Thompson Hill. Jonathan Fox. Ty Crossett Garber. Ty Crossett Garber. Alan Major Germano. Queen Chidima Isu. <laughs> Kara Jones, also graduating with a joint degree from the, the Nicholas School of the Environment. Hey, Mont Kapoor. Hey, Mont Umut Karasalan. Trevor I. Johnson. Michelle Fernandez. Joanna Jardim. Rafael Innocenzo de Andre Bettencourt. Vicente Kronikowski. Bruno Campos. Bruno Campos. Matthew Jung. Alexandra Bueno D'Amado. Enoch Han. Christina Harris. 
Matthew Scott Harris. James Delaplane Hall, Jr. Benit Hingwe. Nikhil Lakshmin Narayan. Ashley Brooke Humane. Janelle Millie Kwan. Deborah Michelle Kerr. Brandon Michael Lamesh. Candace Cherie Jefferson. Lisa Chu. Kundal. Paul Kundal. Michael Andrew Kleiber. Kalkworth. Kevin James Kalkworth. Ryan Wade Landman. David Joel Kaminsky. Christopher Patterson Kenyon. Brian Liebert. Catherine Sarah Levine. Young Jung Ko. Young Jung Ko. Sun Jung Kim. Hong Chol Hong. Sun Young Hong. Sun Young Huang. Nathan John Lawler. Adam Jake Kornblit. <laughs> Jeffrey David Koloski. Leon Tiaba, no middle name. I'm sorry. Okay. Victoria Victoria Leon Tieva. Hadroj. Mm -hmm. Maya Hadroj. Ron Lee. Victoria Changji Huang. Kimberly L. Cause. Arun Krishnan. Arun Krishnan. Ting Gong. Ruming Lian He. Dawe Fong. Dawe Fong. Nick Tayen Lee. Nick Tayen Lee. Pretty Kare. Pretty Kare. Rebecca Coleman. Liren G. Liren G. <clears throat> Sharon Korean. Sharon Korean. Sing Hua Fu. Kaji Kajitani. Hiro Katayama. Okay. 
Nadanai Ming Kanita Wikon. Alan Levy. Diego Gomez. Heather Langerman. Jonathan Lee. Fred Leffler. Adam Sharp Linares. Tao Lei. Chen Ju Lin. Wan Kyun Lee. Juhan Lee. Peter John Lockinger. Andrew Chen Liu. Billy Jack Liu. Bo Leo. Liang Liu, also graduating with a degree from the Duke University School of Medicine. Chi Ming David Lo. <clears throat> Dawei Lu. Weiwei Lu. Ying Li. Yen Eva Lu. Li, excuse me. Matthew James Lloyd, also graduating with a degree from the Nicholas School of the Environment. Davies Branson Luta. Christina Manorino. Hewitt Everett Maddox, also receiving a joint degree from the Duke School of Law. Stephen Ma. Michael Joseph Edward Manella. Katia Makovic. Benjamin Max Markowitz. Sophia Victoria Martinez. Timothy Justin McDonald. McHenry, right? Christine Harley McHenry. Christopher Robert McGurr. Wyatt Cameron McKenzie. Kevin Patrick McGowan. Trevor Roe McKinnon. Renee Therese Mitch. Kristen Danielle McGann. Emily Chilton McKenna. Maria McLemore. 
Ashley Ann McPhail. Nathan John McNamara. Brian Michael McVitie. Rafael Enrico Mercado. John Thomas McLean. Morton. Moran. Thomas Matthew Moran. Is that Mello or Mel? Mello? Julian David Mello Alvarado. Merovich? Not Myrovich, right? Tal Merovich. Balaji Mohanam. James Owen McGivern. Ryan Alexander Mannion. Mitra or Mitra? Mitra. Upayan Mitra. Adrian Meyer. Jorge Marino. Ureta. Patricio McKenna Ureta. Samir Mittal. Marcelo Marisola. No Gaul. Gaul Alfred. Gaul Alfred Mordecai. <laughs> Margaret Louise Mountjoy. Okay. Emily Reagan Malkin. Jacob Simon Mullen. Moat. Just wait, wait. Julia Louise Moat. Mary Frances O'Donnell. Elizabeth Ashley Minert. On deck. On deck. Charlene Marie Ondak. George Soriano. Powery, right? Evelyn Regina Powery. Shailendra Singh. Whitney Ross Morehouse. <laughs> Kelly Ann O'Connor. <laughs> Manette Jessica Schwartz. Megan Delisco Morland. Okay. Megan Delisco Morland. Do you want Cray? Laura Cray Neely. <laughs> Majumo Mizechi. <laughs> Omar Naeem. Cedric Gachu. Okay. 
Francisco Murrieta Pendola. Antonio Menchaca Ballesteros. Sebastian Perez Viana. Mateus Andrade Ribeiro. Antenor Rizzo Patron. Catalina Mancebo. Paula Martinez. Maria Alejandra Venegas. Pablo Ramos Amtman. Eduardo Prada. Pablo Mejia Reyes. Mark Race. Abe Pande. David Francis Pandulo. David Allen Platter. Sid Padkar. Mita Pollen. Bryce and Sung Paul. Matthew Pitorf. Cameron J. Platt. Sarah Patowski. Tan Pervela. Arthur Nee. Ryan Joseph Nguyen. Stephen Orell. John Matthew Oliver. Manuel Anthony O'Gwen. Manuel Anthony O'Gwen. Sam O'Fulwe. Tolu Anna Oleru. Marns, right? Catherine Marns Parker. Ifoma Igbona. Monal Patel. Pushkar Patik. Raghu Prabhu. Pendrick. Pendrack. J. Harlow Pendrack. John David Peretti. Radiris Chichi Diaz. Radiris Chichi Diaz. Radiris Chichi Diaz. Radiris Chichi Diaz. 
Raj Rajendran. Saba Zera Raza. Priyanka Ranyar. Aditya Ravi. David Rokich. Alexi Robski. William Carson Rocket Jr. William Carson Rocket Jr. Nathan Richard Robinson. Scott Rolston. Sesh Sarathi. Saurabh Singh. Mohit Sangwan. Mohit, right? Mohit Sangwan. Itai Rikovic. Itai Rikovic. Itai Rikovic. Itai Rikovic. William Harrison Ranish. Thank you. Just wait for a second. Becky Ross. Congratulations, Andrea. Andrea Reedheimer. Julie Marie Ryan. Joshua Samuel Seidenfeld, also receiving a degree from the Nicholas School. Amber Marie Sands. Paige Elizabeth Stoop. Jake Oliver Kingston Reader, also receiving a degree from the Sanford School. Shiley Shaw. Shiley Shaw. Veronica Stuilova. Vivian Zeldas. Daniel David Weller. Jessica Catherine Schur. Jason Stewart Sierra. Idad Majlish. Thomas Peter Rosenberger. Amit Sharma. Travis Jared Kendall Sherman. Mason Stankovic. Irakli Mendadze. Roman Gabriel Wilson. Andres Indesio St. John Sierpe. Yutaka Sakashita. Alexander Jehun Wu. Takuya Sato.
Frederick Ajay Sowa. Frederick Ajay Sowa. Elizabeth Redding Smith. Evan Evan Ely, Coulter Spies. Charles Bartlett Reichenbach. Catherine David Sternstein. Brett Steer. Thomas Stewart Smith, Jr. Matthew Sofer. Timothy Burns Morelia. Gregory Scott Snyder. Sahil, 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 not Sagal. Matthew David Petrochi. Frank Kwabna Opong. Thomas Gilbert Somerville. Jael Roger Song. Tao Shu. Ning Liu. Liu. Ning Liu. Zhang 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 Vijay Swaminathan. Kirk Richard Soul. Jennifer Singh. Papa Pen Rangwadi Radikai. Shen Chai Pai. Lucille Ting Yao Wu. Matesh Rajesh Tank. Matthew Tam. Ivy Collishayrell Thumpy. Nathan Mark Thompson. Jeffrey Walton Todd. Wacherapong Golf Suwandamong. Yurish Tomovich, also receiving a degree from the Nicholas School. Hugh Henry Trout the Fourth. Adam Benjamin Tyner.
Alexei Vladimirovich Vigdorchik. Cece Wong. Zoen Wong. Hui Wen. Youngjin Seo. Jae Jo Myung. Jae Jo Myung. Chin. Yansu Yu. Yang Cho Song. <laughs> Sarah Catherine Vandenbrock. Diana Olivia Vining. Kim Lynn Vu. Harsha Viswanathan. Alvin Eugene Wade Jr. Shashin Wang. Venus Jingya Wang. Pasawarn Wawawiwat. Yishuang Xia. Rahul Yedavali. Camille Loran Wingo. Camden Melon Umori. Andrew Jeffrey Wright. Christopher Sage Vincent. Daniel Wenzel. Adam Barry Weintraub. Stephanie Evelyn Yu. Enrique Plaza Garcia. Santiago Sainz Rosas. Enrique Tobas Tova. William Michael Mantrak. Jonathan Zandberg. Si 
Zhang Zhang. So you've already done it, but please join me in congratulating the class of 2015. So we're almost officially done with graduation. Um, I'm going to ask the, the audience to remain seated until everyone has recessed uh, out of Cameron. But before we get to the end of the ceremony, I'd like the graduates to please rise. I can't miss one last opportunity to give you some parting words. And so, when I was thinking about the significance of graduation, I remembered many years ago the advice my father gave me upon graduation, and I thought I would share this with you, which was he told me to go forth and prepare to be chewing gum. And my response to that was, thanks, Dad. You know, that's, that's really inspirational. But over time, I've come to realize that the advice to be chewing gum is actually pretty, pretty solid advice. Because if you think about what's in front of you, there will always be tough times on the horizon. All of you will enter moments in your life where there are big challenges. And it's going to feel like you were chewed up and spit out. Or it's going to feel like you're the gum on the bottom of somebody's shoe. And that's not such a great feeling. But here's the thing about gum. You can't destroy it. It doesn't go away. It's indestructible. And so it gives you the resilience that you need during those tough times, but it also gives you the characteristics that you will need to make yourselves valuable wherever you go. Because if you think about the properties of gum, what does it do? Well, it's sticky. So it holds things together. It allows you to hold teams together like you've held together this team. It can take any shape. It's constantly flexible. It can fill any crack. And so you think about those kinds of characteristics. Those are the things that you've done here. Those are the things that you will need to do as you face the rest of your journey. And so, please do go forth and be chewing gum and know that gum comes in all kinds of flavors, but the most special flavor of all is the Fuqua flavor. So I, I also want to thank you one last time. Every class always asks, what makes us special? What makes us unique relative to the other classes? And when I hear that, what I know people are really asking me is, are we your favorite class ever and where do we rank? And so I'm here to tell you that you are my favorite class ever. <laughs> And we've talked about a lot of number ones today, but you rank number one as the best class ever. So congratulations on that. Now having said that, you should hope 
that I say the same thing again to the next year's graduating class, knowing that if I do, that your degree is getting more valuable. So uh, let's, let's hope that others that follow you follow in your tradition. But what makes you the best? It's appropriate to, to reflect on something that Coach K often says here on Coach K Court, which is, if two can act as one, then two are better than one. And if you think about if an entire class can act as one, then you've just unleashed enormous capability. And that's what you've done. You've acted as one, and you've taken this idea of Team Fuqua, and you've made it something even more special. And that's incredibly important to us, that you've made Team Fuqua something that we can be even more proud of. And so thank you for what you've given back in that regard. Having thanked you, I now want to make some requests of you. And I'm not going to ask you for money, but I am going to ask you for some other things. So first, this day is your day. It's about you. But it's actually more than that. It's about all the people who got you here. Because you are in a position, I've used this language with you before, you're literally one in 100,000, each one of you. You're in a position that's unbelievably special in terms of the opportunity that you have. But you got there because of the help of the people around you in your class, and the people around you in the stands, and some people that can't be here today. And so what I ask of you is, yes, it's about you, but it's also about the people who got you here. So please take the time today and the next day and the next day and the next day to thank people. Thank you all. The next request I have is, you're all going to go off to different places in the world, but please stay connected to us here. Come back, if you can't come back physically, come back virtually, telepathically, however that's going to work for you, but stay connected to this place. Because you've invested in making this place better while you're here, and what I hope to see is you continue to invest in the school. You're done with your classes, your exams, your papers, but you're not done being a Fuqua graduate. That's a distinction that you own for life. And I hope that you take that seriously in giving back to those who follow you and making their experiences better. So please stay connected with us. The next thing is stay connected to each other. And I've, I've talked about this, that you assume because you love each other so much that you're just naturally going to stay connected. But that's not necessarily going to be the case. What you'll find is you're going to have lives and professional opportunities, and you're going to be distracted, and you're going to start forgetting about the people who are so important to you right now. Don't ever do that. Don't forget these people. Because if you think about what it is you've been able to accomplish together during these two years, then stretch out that horizon for 50 years and more and think about what you can get from each other over that time. It's an incredible opportunity. Don't leave that on the table. And then the last request is, you've made a difference in our lives. You've made us better. And we have one simple request of you which is that you succeed, that you live lives of success, that you have joy, that you have happiness, happiness in the sense of achieving your full potential. And so you achieve excellence, because if you achieve success and happiness, that's our success and our happiness. And so what we ask of you is simple. Lead a life not only of success, but if you achieve all those things that you're capable of, it will be a life of success and significance. I saw on the, the photo shoot that someone had this African proverb, the group of people had an African proverb written on their arms, 
that I had used in Blue Devil Weekend, Orientation, I can't remember because I talked to you too many times, but the proverb is, for those of you who didn't see this, to go fast, go alone. To go far, go together. And I used to believe that that was true, but all of you have changed my thinking. Because what you've shown me is, when you are a truly great team, you can go both far and fast. And so I look forward to everything you will accomplish. Thank you and congratulations.
Thank you.